Good afternoon. Welcome to the second session of A Map to the Door of No Return, A Gathering. Map to the Door of No Return at 20, A Gathering. Um, I am Christina Sharp, and I am Professor and Canada Research Chair in Black Studies and the Humanities at York University. I want to welcome you to this session with dancer and choreographer Nia Love and Professor Ronaldo Walcott. We have a bit of housekeeping first. We have arranged closed captioning for this webinar. If you would benefit from closed captioning, please bring your mouse to the bottom of the screen and select live transcript. This event is also being live streamed on our YouTube channel and is available in the link in the chat. We encourage you to use the hashtag map at 20 to share your reactions and comments on social media. We begin with marking the violent histories of where we are, with making note of and reminding us of the ongoing conflicts and contradictions of this land, this water, this air. This land is the territory of the Huron-Wendat and the Petun First Nations, the Anishinaabe, the Mississaugas of the Credit River, and the nations of the Haudenosaunee. The meeting place of Toronto remains the home to indigenous people from across Turtle Island. These Americas are built on violence and erasure, and we bring these histories with us. Those native to this land, indigenous people from other territories, as well as white settlers by conquest, and those of us who have come here by force or otherwise as a result of slavery, colonialism, and imperialism, and ongoing wars. When we enter any room, even or especially virtual rooms like these, we must bring these histories into view. This acknowledgement is particular to Toronto, the location of York University and the host of a map to the door of no return at 20, a gathering. But we are meeting together virtually from countries around the world, each with its own history of conquest, white settler colonialism, slavery, imperialism, and ongoing war. And we must also acknowledge and bring those histories and presence into view. It is with this knowledge we enter and meet here in the hopes of making a different world. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Nia Love's G1 host, Lost at Sea, and its new iteration, Undercurrents. Films which engage with recent developments in contemporary Black studies, including renewed investigations of the world historical scope and significance of transatlantic slavery, as well as the catastrophic ecological dimensions of this history. This project extends scholar Sadia Hartman's method of critical fabulation, which attempts to weave narratives out of the abyssal gaps in the historical archive in the, into the nexus of performance and healing. This sense of the ocean as an historical abyss forever marked by slavery is also highlighted by scholar Christina Sharp's use of the concept residence time, referring to the life cycle of elements cast into the ocean. For example, the residence time of sodium is 260 million years. This concept propelled love to earn her deep sea diving license in 2018 to further her choreographic research and film underwater dive. Being submerged in the density of these ungraspable set sediments and encountering the shimmer of life and death requires a rigorous reattunement of her sensorium, Love says. With the undercurrents film, she presents to audiences the spectrum of multidisciplinary research, embodied study and performance, and a way to make sense out of no sense. An extension into the abstraction of the black interstellar womb Love invites audiences to join her and enter into this elemental medium, where together we fabulate an assemblage which reshapes our capacity to sense this historical condition, which defines our life on earth and beyond. This new mode of attunement makes possible radical empathy and care. Nia Love presently lives on unceded Lenape Nation land known as New York. Love pens her name in lowercase to challenge notions of subject, subjection, and subjectivity. 
In the tradition of her grandmothers and great grandmothers, love's practice redefines power under the rubric of care and in the realm of domesticity. Her career spans 40 years, beginning in 1978 when she became one of the youngest international apprentices with the Ballet Nacional de Cuba. Love received a BFA in theater directing and, and, and pre-medicine from Howard University, as well as an MFA in choreography from Florida State University. In 1996, Love studied Butoh and toured with the Japanese Butoh master Min Tanaka and was an honorary Fulbright Fellow in 2002-2003. Love has two Bessie Awards, 2017 Dance Performance Award Outstanding Performance and Outstanding Music. She is a recipient of the 2019 Gibney Presents Residency and Gibney DIP. Urban Bushwoman's 2019 to 2021 Choreographic Center Initiative Fellowship, a recipient of a 2020 MAP Fund, 2020 to 2021 Artist in Residence at Bryn Mawr College, the Movement Research Rosen Fund Residency. She is a three-time Alfred Award nominee and most recently the 2021 Mank Residency and the 2021 Bryn Mawr College Artist in Residence. She is currently the Brooklyn Arts Exchange Artist in Residence co-advisor and New York Live Arts Fresh Tracks advisor. Love is an assistant prof adjunct professor at Queens College and at New School, Eugene Lang College of Liberal Arts. Ronaldo Walcott is professor in the Department of Women and Gender Studies at the University of Toronto. His teaching and research are in the areas of Black diaspora cultural studies and post-colonial studies with an emphasis on questions of sexuality and gender. He is the author most recently of On Property, which was long listed for the Toronto Book Award and The Long Emancipation, Moving Toward Black Freedom. We will now screen Mia Love's film, Undercurrents. It's approximately 16 minutes long, after which Renaldo Walcott and I will join Mia in conversation, leaving some time for a brief Q&A.
I just want to start by saying, um, Mia, what a what a what what a beautiful film, mm -hmm. and uh, as always, it's such a pleasure to share to share space with you. We were saying um, that you know it's been we we worked together. Um, you invited me to work with you at the Gibney uh, in New York. So I'm only sorry that this time uh, our speaking together couldn't be in person. Um, I wanted to start actually by inviting you to, to share with us how you came to this work and to this iteration of the work. I think in a conversation with Benin Ford, maybe last year, they asked you about your memories of water and the quote, black history of the sea. Um, you're a diver and, I, and so much of your, your work and this work involves water, water, sky, galaxies, light and light, bioluminescence and residence time. So I wonder if there's a lot, but I wonder if we can, we can begin there. Yeah, it's a lot. And I'm so grateful to, um, I want to thank you, Christina, for inviting me. Um, and I also want to thank you, Ronaldo, for being able to come and be together with us here at this time and accepting that uh, that that um, that quest. Uh, so thank you all both so much. Um, thank you. This film is it's interesting because this really is um, a serial multimedia performance kind of gathering piece. Um, it doesn't live just in in the film that you that you saw. Um, it is it is this. A, a, a so-called site, a site of living, a site of being, a site of memory. Um, it's it's a kind of continuous engagement with uh, with memory and prolonged histories of the afterlives of slavery and trans. Mm -hmm. um, it's always and 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 G one host, which is the which is the, the original kind of. Um, the first iteration, the first performance work um, is an unfolding term ghost that I'm working with. Um, and that work kind of pursues the question regarding my body status um, mm -hmm. within the historical, geographical, and atmospheric limits. Um, it also pivots on a fundamental query of what remains with the middle passage as force and gesture and effect. Um, mm -hmm. Um, it, it, it's an opportunity for, for me for the first time to think about how to put choreographic sensibility on mm. so-called paper, mm. film, film, if you will. Um, I'm looking at this film as an immersive part of this multi-performance installation. Um, I'm looking at it at, at being a 360 immersive bubble space, and I and I and I and I'm asking, what is what what does it mean to be immersed completely? Um, mm. Mm. When I got my deep sea diving license, I think one of the one of the um, maybe most um, resonating memories was when I first went down 40 feet uh, with a rig in my mouth. Um, and I knew, and I had never gone underwater completely, and I would be there for, uh, we were there for 40 minutes. So it, it, it was a divining with death. It was an, it was, it was a trust, even though I know I had this rig in my mouth and I knew that I had this tank on my back that I could breathe oxygen, my mind and body wasn't having it. And at some point in the descent, I started to have um, an attack. Uh, you know, I, 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 I almost really lost it. Um, and I had to really reattune myself to the submergence. I had to think of myself as being light. I had to think 
of breathing really different. And so all these kinds of, um, these memories, if you will, are now embedded inside of my body as part of the practice, right? As I, as I kind of look at, at this work and try to bring up something from nothing, 600 years of, of, of a, scaven like a scavenger hunt of 600 years of nothing. I know that I can't go and necessarily bring up this tangible thing, right? And then how do I bring it up? And then how do I practice it in my body? Um, so some of the, in the film, you'll see some of, you'll, well, you'll see the majority of the film. Um, and let me just thank uh, both uh, my sister, Rhonda Haynes, who's a filmmaker who's sitting behind me, and Aiden Un, who created the um, editing version of the film. And before I go on, I want to thank Bain and Ford, who is my thinking partner, amazing theorist um, and visual artist who really sits with me um, as I recall these callings of nothingness and everythingness, the inside and the outside of this thing, and puts it in some kind of like readable form. Um, and so, um, so what you what you got to see in the film is a, is an opportunity uh, for me to continue to go back through being thirty feet under without a lid. So once I learned, once I got my deep sea diving license and I dived up to seventy feet, um, I started practicing diving thirty feet without a tank. Um, and so a lot of the footage that that you see um, in the film is that capturing of 30 foot, um, 30 feet, no, no, no oxygen tank. So I don't know if I, if I, it, it's so much, and I don't know if I answered any question. Um, you did, but you've given me something else. I know Bernardo has a question, but I'd like to follow up briefly with one, because I know we don't have that much time, but as you were talking about breathing, um, I immediately, you know, also thinking about, you know, whales, I immediately thought of Alexis Pauline Gum's work in Undrowned, where she writes, um, and if the scale of breathing is collective beyond species and sentience, so is the impact of drowning, the massive drowning yet unfinished, where the distance of the ocean meant that people could become property, that life could be for sale. I am talking about the Middle Passage and everyone who drowned and everyone who continued breathing, but I am troubling the distinction between the two. I am saying that those who survived in the underbellies of boats under each, under each other, under unbreathable circumstances are the undrowned and their breathing is not separate from the drowning of their kin and fellow captives. Their breathing is not separate from the breathing of the ocean. Their breathing is not separate from the sharp exhale of hunted whales, their kindred also. Their breathing did not make them individual survivors. It made a context. Mm. Yeah. Um, and I was just thinking about about Gums's work in Undrowned and as you were talking about breathing and talking about um, um, you know how to how to sort of embody the knowledge that you weren't going to drown, but your body didn't want to believe it, right? That you were going to be able to breathe. And I don't know if you want to say anything else, but I I just really wanted to to put Gums's work into the room and to think with you as well. Absolutely. I think with her all the time. Um, and I think, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm open. I, I, I feel like when I held my breath, I mean, because we're talking about breathing, but there's also this thing about holding the breath, right? Like holding and restoring the breath, um, maintaining that, um, um, that kind of restoring factor in hopes that it will sustain me, right? And so it's that sustaining. And there were a couple of times that I came up and um, we had dived, you know, several days. Um, we started at five in the morning and went to around no, five at night. We tried to do evening dives too, but evening dives were harder. 
for lots of reasons um, of sea life coming out and not being able to um, locate <laughs> locate yourself underwater um, without the sun um, or the light. And I came up and I had a bloody nose one time and the diver that was with me, David Gordon, who shot a lot of the underwater uh, film sequences, um, said, are you all right, Mia? And I, and I said, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Like I, I didn't feel the displacement, right? And then I looked down and you know there was blood coming from my nose and he's like, you know what? I think we did enough today. <laughs> you know? um, yeah, so I, I will say that in, in thinking with Pauline Gums and that and that non-binary, that very, that very, um, that very existential sensibility um, about blackness, about self, about life and death, in 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 that instant. Yeah, thank you, Ronaldo. <clears throat> yes, Nia. Um, thank you very much for this offering, and I and I and I use that word offering deliberately because, um, you know, you you used the word earlier, saturation, and you know the blueness, um, the the opening of the film with the saturated blue, the 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 recalling of, um, our enslaved enslaved ancestors true well-known imagery, um, the, the celestial, the saturated celestial nature of the opening, and then the entering of the water. And, and so those, those kind of relationships. And, and but th that opening with the ancestors, the celestial nature and the water and the, and the final kind of closing with the music and the single drop into the water really kind of had me thinking about the question of cosmogony and cosmology in this work. And I wonder if you want to say something about how um, new, newer religions or Africanisms that continue to um, persist in the Americas through things like Obey and Voodoo and Santa Rea and Candomblé are organizing this world. The question of ritual in the film, there's a chant, God and a woman, God and a woman, God and a woman. So I wonder if you want to talk about that aspect of the work. Yeah, um, I, absolutely. I'm thinking about um, and contending with uh, some of the, some of the creation stories that I heard about when I first went to Mali and the Nomos, um, the creation story, that talks about the relationship of Ama um, as uh, the beginning and the ending and the universal sensibility of, of knowledge beyond what we know. Um, and it, it got me thinking also about all the things that live and exist inside of my body that are not necessarily something that I can name, um, that this name has, has, has preceded me. Um, and it are and it's these Africanist presence inside of that that continues to guide me. And so Haitian sensibilities, like my great great grandmother is Haitian, but and then I just found that out. It wasn't like uh, something that was to uh, immediately told in my own uh, family cosmology. It was almost spectered in, in a way. Um, but then I remember my grandmother saying to me about 10 years ago, you know, you remind me of Grandma Elsie. Um, and, I, and then I didn't realize who Grandma Elsie really, really was in the context of her geographical setting and the African sensibility that is deeply embedded inside of my work. And so the, 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 it feels like this intuitive nature of the African spiritual sensibility is deeply inside of the work that I do, inside of um, uh, the calling of deity sensibilities, Olokun, Yemonja, Mame Wata. These are, are inside of me too, like continue to connect me and watermark me, uh, so to speak. Um, 
So yeah, yes, I'm in, deeply, deeply inside of the work and the choices that I made in the film um, through the notion of cosmology and its direct relationship to um, uh, ephemeral and uh, distal and, um, and psychedelic, uh, psychedelic color sensorium that you, that you kind of talked about with the, in the beginning kind of opening of the film. And those ancestral, um, those ancestral like spirits that move through this cosmology up in the universal and or galaxy space and then bringing it kind of like back in and out of the water or that there never was a difference mm -hmm. between either one of them. Um, yeah, it were these daguerreotypes that Christina talks about in the wake that I started to bring inside of G1 host, Christine Idol, and you didn't have a chance to see the work that I did at Gibney that evening, but we took the daguerreotypes, those four daguerreotypes, right, of the fathers and the daughters and placed them hugely inside of the space. Um, and then I, you know, brought them into the film to almost like um, reimagine them in another way past with Louis Agassi's sensibility, past what what that was supposed to have meant and a deeper African sensibility of beyond religion, right? Beyond that. Um, so yeah, I, there's lots of conversation that, that's happening in my body and my mind and particularly in this film and my choices immediately um, with the work. Yeah, I know if I answered that question. Oh, you, you, you most definitely yeah. did. did, yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I really can't believe this because we're actually almost at time. Oh. But, but 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 I want to I want to push us give us a little five extra minutes because we have we have a little half an hour until our until the next. Um, and that was that was that was a beautiful answer. Did you did you want to add something, Ronaldo? I did kind of. I, Please, I wanted, Nia, go ahead. I, I wanted to read something if I if I could that of I course. that I can. Um, that has been marking me in this work. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's Dion's work. Um, Please. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I wanted, I wanted to say to both of you, um, your voices are, are so um, comforting to me. And yeah, so I don't know if I'm gonna read this as beautifully as you introduced us all here today and situated mm -hmm. us in this space, Christine. This skill, this mystery eluded my grandfather. The door of no return is of course no place at all but a metaphor, for a place. Ironically and perhaps suitably, it is no one place, but a collection of places. Landfalls in Africa where castles were built, a house for slaves, un maçon de esclay, rude enough to disappear or elaborate and vain enough to survive after centuries. A place where a certain set of transactions occurred, perhaps the most important of them being the transference of selves. The door of no return, real and metaphoric as some places are, mythic to those of us scattered in the Americas today. To have one's belongings lodged in a metaphor is a voluptuous entry. To inhabit a trope, to be a kind of fiction, to live in the Black diaspora is I think to live as a fiction, a creation of empires and also self-creation. It is to be a being living inside and outside herself. It is to apprehend the sign one makes yet to be unable to escape it, except in a radiant moment of ordinary, or ordinariness made like art. To be a fiction in search of its most resonant metaphor, then is even more intriguing. So I'm scouring maps of all kinds, 
the way that some fictions do, discurs discursively, elliptically, trying to locate their own transferring selves. Thank you so much for that reading, Mia. And I'd actually like to say, maybe to sort of close with, a, well, first with a tremendous thank you for the work. There are two questions. I will send them to you. I'm sorry that we didn't get to other people's questions. But I wanted to say something about the, the kind of dwelling that we Black people do and that we keep trying to do that sometimes gets written off as gloominess or a refusal to be in the present, but is instead a kind of insistence and a kind of moving always toward a bigger understanding of Blackness in life and death that is not only mourning, but is an understanding of the immensity of that rupture and how we live it in the present. And it seems to me that that's so much that what your work is doing, opening up meaning, making meaning, opening up, um, trying to open, opening this up to feeling, to knowing, to gesture, to embodiment, to movement. And I feel so much of this in your work. And I can't wait to see more iterations of G host lost at sea. And you know, I'm trying to bring you to York physically to do <laughs> a dance, res to do a, a residency um, as part of um, the, the Canada Research Chair. And so I thank you so much for this. Um, and now I um, do want to give us a final word, not a final word, but a closing. Well, I final. <laughs> no, not final. Closing. Closing. <laughs> no, I mean I'm 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 I am full. I am full, and I want to thank both of you for holding space for me. Um, this work is um, a continuation of this moment, um, like it is, continuation yeah. of transferring selves. So yeah. I'm, I'm really and it's beautiful. Proud. Um, and so now I just want to, to, thank, um, to thank you both. Um, and again, always Mia, thank you for your wonderful presence and your care. And I want to tell all of the audience that um, starting at 5 p.m. will be the opening of the virtual art exhibit curated by Ellen Walker called Thresholds wading through Dion Brown's A Map to the Door of No Return. I hope you will join us at 5 p.m. And I hope you will join us over the course of the next three days. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Mm -hmm.